the, the presenter for today is uh, Luigi Boglione, and he's from Italy, and he's a measurement and process improvement specialist, and he's the president of one of the gold members, Guffi Isma, in, in Italy. And Luigi, he uh, is also director in IPAG, International Function Point User Group, uh, and in their uh, sizing and international standards. So he's taking care of that part. And he's also responsible for one of the committees in ISPC, the marketing committee. Uh, Luigi is uh, known as, as a very frequent international speaker around software measurement, process improvement and quality and is certified uh, in different uh, uh, software measurement certifications like uh, function points uh, and uh, round snap that is a non functional requirements uh, process and as a uh, software measurement specialist CSMS and he is a phil philosophy doctor in in MIS so he has a very uh, good background to talk about this, about estimation of software projects, software measurement, etc. So I'm very pleased to welcome a very dear friend of mine, Luigi Buglione. Welcome to start your Thank presentation. You. <clears throat> Thank you, Pierre. Is it, uh, okay, <clears throat> let's tell me if you can see my screen. Yes, we can see your screen. Perfect. <clears throat> so, welcome to everybody. Hope to be on time. You can see here, since we are speaking about estimates, a counter, a time counter, because I have only 46 minutes and a few more seconds for discussing this topic plus including also questions and answers and uh, the, th the issue today is to um, refine the way to estimate your projects and to um, deal with some productivity figures and ISBSG is the home for doing that according to its repositories uh, to its tools that from uh, quite uh, 25 years are the most known and is the reference center for benchmarking practices around the, the world, not only using function points. And uh, these are the three main goals for this presentation, to discuss uh, how ISBSG repositories can help an organization to derive a reference productivity. Number two, to discuss about uh, what is this technique, a planning game technique I created, but it, you will, will see it's uh, very simple in the way to play. It's a little bit less simple in the way to understand uh, how much effort uh, to distribute and in which way across the life, side, uh, life uh, cycle uh, in a project. And uh, the most difficult tough thing but the very important thing is to balance the effort and cost for a provider in order to achieve the better business result for its customer and uh, it's something smart with a set of goals very very difficult to achieve sometimes because when we start to make a plan any kind of and there is a businessman like this one asking during in the middle of the project to ask you if it's a possible to add more floors. And the typical uh, civil engineer would answer not. And so the, what, what, which uh, should be the difference between a civil engineer engineering project and a software engineering project? Because often what is virtual seems to be always possible. And, uh, and another very funny strip I found over the internet was this one. There is no time for thinking. It's always a management decision. So it seems that in ICT, anything can be possible because it's virtual. But the first main question eventually to discuss should be this one. 
And this is the key word, which should be the scope for our interest in order to define, as you know, because most of you or anybody of you is a counter, a functional size measurement counter. It's important to define the scope and the boundaries for an activities. And many, many times along these 40 years from the creation of function points, Dr. Albrecht has spoke, as well as Kevin Jones and many other people, about function points as they were square meters. And I found some pictures over the internet because if a function point is like a square meter, according to the same number of uh, square meters wide, the prices should raise up and be different from a three house, a colonial house, a Victorian house, etc. Maybe because there was other elements like this one that can be something not only more than the solid square meters. And so quantity and quality gives uh, returns you the final results of our project. But the point is this one. Is it possible to fix uh, from an economical viewpoint in our ICT world a price per function point, uh, whatever is the technology, no matter about uh, which one is the technology, apply it, because this is a very long time discussed issue. And uh, the point is that we are moving from, um, from a long time about this kind of discussion. For instance, this one is a, a very recent European project called the ULISA, introducing not only IFPAC, but also the cosmic function uh, sizing, functional sizing needed. And I found, uh, it's a public document, I found in the pricing model guidelines uh, sign as, as some attention points, because the methodologies for sizing, as you know, had a common house, that is this family standard, 14, 1, 4, 3, and there are six documents describing what is common to his bug, cosmic, NESMA, FISMA, and Mark II sizing uh, models. And uh, if you look here about uh, what is a boundary for an application, who is the user for doing a sizing, there is something that often risks to be modified in a contractual, uh, from a contractual uh, viewpoint. And for instance, uh, here there is an introduction about what is a developed function point. There is a, a differentiation about uh, how to come for a COTS application and uh, which kind of boundary to define for other kind of application. Uh, here, for instance, this contract uh, would define um, as the user, differently, for instance, from the IFPAC definition, only business end user. That does mean that, for instance, an IoT application should be not sizable using function points, whatever kind of, because two different machines exchanging data should not be recognized formally as users. So this is one of the differences and the misconception about the functional size methods. For instance, in this bid, also there is a differentiation about the formula to be applied not respecting neither the IFPAG nor the cosmic uh, guidelines about it. But it's just an introduction in order to discuss what is in and what is out and what is the effort and cost for a function point. Because this technique was created in 79 by Dr. Albrecht. That does mean more than 40 years ago. And uh, in uh, 2012, I created, a, I wrote a short article in the metric views, there is the IFPAG uh, newsletter, uh, the annual newsletter, introducing what I called later the ABC schema. That does mean that typically, in order to understand to this business question, how much effort and cost should be included or not included into a function point, I created a very simple schema uh, that is on the left of this slide. That does mean that for any user requirement, the user business user requirement can be split potentially into three parts. A functional user requirement that is a product size on the functional part. A non-functional requirement about the product element. And there could be a third part 
to be split potentially in any requirement, there is a, a quote of effort and cost about the management of the, these other two potential tasks. That does mean that you can call the task strictly referred to the functional sizing measurement needed, whatever kind of, as A type requirements and tasks. The, the second chunk would be the non functional tasks uh, on a Gantt chart, and I call them the B type. And finally, all the organizational and management tasks uh, eventually bounded, uh, included into the, the scope of a project, as well as project management, measuring the software, are called C-type tasks. So in this way, it's possible to split a user requirement in, in different parts to find a different sizing unit for any potential part and from a quantity to derive according to a certain level of productivity for that single part to derive the time. Because the equation should be this one, quantity from the quantity, the amount of a certain phenomenon. You can derive the effort and the duration and then you can derive cost and prices economical side of the, of the project. But you have to sum only the effort and cost in order to derive for a project the overall effort and cost. But the effort and cost are a function of the three different chunks. Because as anybody of you knows and apply daily, the cost for a professionality, for a professional working in this part or in this when this other part are not the same daily cost or not the same daily price. So this is very important and the same kind of information was replied later in an IFBAG Cosmic document written in 2000, in 2015, called the Glossary of Non-Functional Requirement. And this is a picture from this document you can download from the IFBAG or from the Cosmic website and this picture replied exactly the ABC schema with some slightly difference in the wording. But the business question are these ones. How can the ABC schema help in planning your project? Because often a provider could forget with the, the customer some activities before and during the estimation phase that during the project should be necessarily reintroduced. And you know that it's very, very important to, to reduce it to the minimum one, to the minimum level, the um, uh, error in the estimates against the actual ones. It's important to respect constraints that a budget had about time cost and productivity in general a project. And it's important also to stress the percentage and amount of effort in a project really related to a function point, because otherwise the the issue and the NESMA started before other association in the early 90s to discuss uh, about the importance of differentiating a development or a redevelopment against a maintenance project. Because a maintenance project can have eventually many different requirements, not necessarily to be sized with a functional sizing unit, a function points, whatever kind of. And so it's very important because anyone here is part of a project. You can be a contractor, you can be a provider, you can be a consultant for a third part, but anybody of us looks at money. And it's important to understand what does it mean productivity? Because in, in ISBSG, we have a different glossary from the beginning, that is PDR. PDR is exactly one divided by the productivity. It's not exactly the same thing. So it's important and we're going to look during the presentation also numbers, just to do not make confusion about the two related concepts. So Kevin Jones uh, in the mid eighties uh, started with a very known paper, wrote uh, the productivity paradox in order to introduce the function point concept uh, to the main ICT audience in that period. And the paradox was to move from a production and a management accounting lines of code to the counting of function points, demonstrating the function points 
would have been resolved many business issues, demonstrating a real quantity, uh, sizing functional requirements. After 30 years, 30 years, uh, I started to discuss with many of you at the national and the international level, a new productivity paradox, because in the contracts, often this is the productivity formula, quantity against time. But I called for many years, there is a product, a productivity, a nominal productivity. Nominal because on the upper part, there is a number of function points. There is a product size and only about functional user requirement. Typically, the effort on the bottom side of the formula is not a product, but it's a project amount of hours or many days. It is about the A, the B, and the C part in the ABC schema. That does mean that here, that are parts not comprised here in the sizing issue, in the sizing number, in the upper part of the formula. And so it seems to be paradoxical eventually to organize one more meeting in your project, increasing the effort, having the same number of function points, and resulting to be less productive from a formal viewpoint for your counterpart. And so anything started from this simple split of the effort into the ABC parts, three parts just to discuss how a project can be uh, done. And so it's very, very important and the business question would remain, which should be the scope of our interest. And from uh, looking to, to money, also uh, we can have the unit cost uh, typically. And so typically the formula that many can apply is this one, a cost or a price per function point. But the typical the cost is a project figure, including anything. The function point is a um, technical number demonstrating only the sizing of the functional user requirement, not anything. And also here, the ABC schema could help in better understanding the split. Because if I have costs not referring to what is a function point, whatever the methodology, eventually the cost would raise up, the number of function point in accounting would remain the same, and it would seem that the unit cost per functional sizing unit would raise up, even if these two elements does not have a strict direct relation with the strict number of the functional sizing unit. And it's another paradox. But it's just an introduction because there is another element. We are speaking and we are dealing with function points. So we are measuring in ICT, in an ICT environment, but anybody seems to forget that any, anything we are going to produce is a product, but what we are going to manage is a service that includes a product. And so, I don't know if you know uh, ITIL or other some other service management best practices, MOF, CMMI for services, IT for IT. There are many, many, many frameworks about service management. And ITIL is the most used and known one for more than 30 years. It is the basis, it was the basis for the ISO 20,000 family of standards. And uh, this is the definition we have about value. Value is the summation of the utility plus warranty. That does mean the viewpoint of the business, the viewpoint for the users, and the results is the value. But the utility would mean in the service management world and software management is an input for a service is the what a service should do. And the warranty would mean a couple of things, how and how much a service should perform. And so availability, capacity, continuity, security, service level management, etc., are what in the software world can be respectively functional user requirements and non-functional requirements. And here also you can count all the perception part so the user experience, the customer experience, and many, many more about quality use. And for those of you not experienced in the service management definition, this is the definition for what is a service. 
a means for enabling the co-creation of value. That does mean that for co-creation, we'll see a slide later, we have to involve more and more people, not only the business users, because otherwise the risk is to underestimate a project strongly. This is a picture and a short video in Italian, unfortunately, for a meeting from people from the Italian public administration on that date. And this is a sentence that the people representing the public administration told on that date in that meeting, the forum of the public administration 2017. He said at that time, the function points are the reason why a project is delivered and nobody used the functionalities. In order to describe a problem, an issue, that maybe uh, is what I call the iceberg of requirements. Very few requirements are explicitly written in a bid or in a contract. Many more are ambiguous, not granular, but many, many more requirements. That does mean more effort and tasks are uh, supposed to be implicit as well as, for instance, accessibility for a software system. And so imagine to look at the traffic lights for uh, having green, yellow, amber, and red lights. The difference, the, the more the, are the task yellow and red, the more the scope creep of your project. And so we should maximize the green zoom, minimize and reducing the yellow red zooms in order to reduce the uh, um, relative error that it is calculated with this formula estimated values est estimated uh, uh, sorry here uh, i forgot in italian steam estimated uh, minus the actual divided by the actual and this is the typical cone of uncertainty figures you know many of you yet known demonstrating that from the early phases till the end of the project that this error uh, for over or underestimates should little by little uh, would be reduced because you are you acquire more information about the project but this information should come from the co-creation using and involving from the beginning more stakeholders and this is a picture from this funny website i don't know if anybody look at it but imagine to create this object asking to the customer to explain it or doing posting the same question to a project leader an analyst a programmer and etc to many 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 people but anybody of them would return you a different requirement and a point and a good business analyst should before trying to keep all the information together and a good measurer should the size the right requirement, functional requirement, and non-functional requirement, keeping all the information, not only the functional part. Otherwise, the risk is like in Italy to have a very huge system. This is a system from the public administration about the public health, apparently very useful, but very difficult to be accessed because we have from according also to the GDPR rules and many other rules about security and privacy of data, uh, a very complex way to enter now into this kind of systems. And this is for Italy, but it is something common also for many, many other people in many other countries of you. I saw many of you coming from Australia, from Brazil, from Italy, from Sweden, from US and uh, uh, from Finland and many other countries worldwide. And so this is just uh, some snapshot in order to show that uh, sometimes security to seems to be more important uh, from the business side and more than functionalities. That is uh, the representation more of what a user could have. And in uh, some uh, service management uh, model like high ideal, there is a new principle uh, that is called the principle number six, and its uh, title is keep it simple and practical. That does mean to keep the viewpoint of a final user 
and to try to understand effectively how a business system should be realized, moving from the uh, requirements, but involving into the elicitation of requirements also the real final users. And it does mean that when you put in place your, um, your project and you establish your life cycles, you should take into account not only these phases, imagine this is a picture from the rational unified process, not only the production of the process, but also, for instance, the operational side. That does mean what is in IT is called the deliver and support phase in a, so in a service life cycle. Or the same information could be kept also from the CMI, CMI for services. Several models, same idea. And what is very, very important for arriving to describing you of the planning game is a very simple information from a business viewpoint. That is, uh, that moves, uh, we, we um, explain these basics in this ISMA conference a few ago, three years ago, and the starting point is, is this one, was this one. Any service based on software products can be good, cheap or fast, but you can pick only two things at a time, not all the three together. Then, and the metaphor, the graphical idea could be this one. Imagine to inflate a balloon, and eventually the volume for the balloon or the balloon area is uh, the time and cost for a project for delivering at this milestone. And this is your starting point, and this is your estimate. But from the estimate to the, the, the progressing the project, somebody in the project that can be the customer, that can be somebody within the provider team can ask to you to reduce cost. But in order to play to the balloon effect game, the rule is that your balloon, that does mean the result of your project, the balloon should not explode, otherwise you fail. And so the physical effect, if you press down a balloon from the top bottom, on the bottom is to move the area, the volume of the balloon in this way. That does mean to postpone according to, for reducing the cost, you have to deal with delivery times and you have to postpone a milestone later than expected. Somebody can agree, somebody not. And so there is another possibility that if you are planning to deliver here, eventually somebody, typically a customer, can ask you, typically a provider, to anticipate the delivery date, due date, and eventually the cookie corresponds to an increase of the costs in order to do not make the balloon explode. So, so it does mean that for time or cost on the organization of a project, you have to change something. And so possible solution on the left, possible risk on the right. The opportunities on the left are to describing a project, uh, typically a waterfall a life cycle project, based on a waterfall a life cycle approach into a several sprints. If you are going to use, for instance, Scrum or other agile methodologies, it does mean to reduce the risk and to split the many many tasks in several iterative sprints. And it can reduce the risk, but it can allow you to deliver on time, on quality, just a part of the final scope and functionalities. What unfortunately risk to happen daily is another thing that anybody would like to reduce time and cost, but not changing anything, neither in the organization of the project and the final results is simply that the project would explode and the, the, uh, the deliverables foreseen between the contractual parts could not uh, be successful, uh, nor neither the first one nor the second one. So that's why I created a schema that is a very simple matrix trying to depict uh, the phases of your life cycle. This is just an example as a series of columns and the serial second dimension that is the 
uh, the ABC schema, from the ABC schema, the three different type of requirements. Because for instance, project management can uh, insert only time effort for the C tasks. Because uh, doing a meeting or measuring imaging function points does not make neither larger not lower the size of function points. This kind of activities, the C type activities, are not variant against the number of function points. They are in the frame of a project, but they are not directly related to a functional sizing unit, number of sizing unit for your software product. So the AB tasks are referred to the problem. The C tasks are referred to the whole project. Of course, your scope is to take into account all the three chunks. But it's very, very important for doing the right estimate to make and to create a matrix crossing life cycle phases by requirement type. And this is what I called the planning game. And this is a very, very simple game. So just to, to show you the basics. We can move, we can move, imagine, it's, a sim it's very, very simple, simple to show you directly the template and the plane from the beginning. So these are the basic formula to be taken into account. Productivity is, in, on a general way, the um, uh, amount of quantity that could be function points divided by the effort, many days, many hours. And, uh, if you want to estimate uh, moving from function points and productivity, your effort in many days measured, sized in many days or many hours, you can apply the inverse formula. The effort is the amount of function points subdivided by your productivity level. We mean, uh, with a reminder, ISBSG is the owner of uh, more than 9,000 projects worldwide gathered from 25 years that can help you to derive the right level of productivity and the right PDR level. And so, as Pierre said before, you can buy our repositories or you can use our, our PDQ productivity data query tool for deriving these values. This is an example with an instruction for Java PL SQL projects. And supposing, for instance, this number of function points and this effort in many days, this would be the productivity. If you can vary, imagine the effort, the productivity would be upper, uh, would raise up, and the PDR would raise down. So it's just a question to know which are the variable to play with this variable in order to start the planning game. So now let's imagine that I have a project with this effort, this productivity, this number of function points, just to start. Or imagine eventually, just to create something a little bit uh, closer to reality with these numbers. So 100 man days means if I want to play with man hours, that can be easier for many body of us, to have to plan in my Gantt uh, chart, in my Gantt uh, schema, this number amount of hours. I move from a backlog and I have to start deciding as a project manager, as a planner, how many hours would I assume to insert in my, in my Gantt chart for project management activities. Let's suppose 10%. How many hours eventually for measurement activities. And I can suppose a couple of days or three days expressed in hours. How many man hours for writing user manuals? And I can suppose a couple of days. How many hours for quality assurance? Three days, etc. And you can see here that the backlog that should arrive till to zero uh, when I insert these numbers, I move from the 100% to a lower number. Uh, release and uh, validation activities. 
can be another couple of days, imagine, something like that. These are, this is just an example to show you numbers and the dynamic for this kind of game. Imagine now remaining with, af after having thought to a certain number of nine hours for the seed tasks, to have to deal with planning about the A and B activities. That does mean the product related effort. Typically, the alpha of the 50% of this number, so imagine 300 hour, nine hours, can be about the build, build construction phase. Uh, and uh, I remain with this amount of many hours for analysis and development and uh, sorry and design and the testing activities. And I can decide uh, for my own to split, imagine this amount of hours here, this amount of hours here for testing. The first check would be this one. Do we agree or not as a project team about this distribution of percentages. And we can move the hours, uh, keeping off, imagine 10 hours here, remaining with 10, hour, 10 hours more to be inserted here. So you have to conclude the game with zero nine hours in the backlog. And then the last step, after we have agreed on the effort per software life cycle phase, and I repeat, here you can write the number of columns according to your, to your own life cycle. It's not strictly a suggestion to this example. The, uh, the last step is to split these many hours from row 13 to row 14. That does mean that a part of these hours are about function points and a part of these hours are about non-functional size that can be measured and sized using whatever kind of technique. It can be Eastpack Snap, it can be ISO 25023, whatever kind of new future techniques about non-functional size. And so imagine for a management information system, a management system typically two thirds of the effort can be here. And so I can suppose these numbers and one third for non-functionalities the quality issues. For testing, the testing column, typically you have more tests about security, performance, capacity here than about the strict functionalities. So typically here one third, here two third, but you are free, I repeat, you are free to decide your own split of the overall effort according to your own planning way. There is no rule, fixed rule about it. Of course, and as usual. And so imagine here to insert, I don't know, 90, uh, no, 70 and 90 hours, imagine something like that. And also for the building, the construction phase, it's very important to understand because anybody here, if it's measuring software, does know it, that not all the uh, build effort is about function points because what is about uh, uh, configuration for a cost software, what is about the construction of code data, uh, what is uh, our functional reuse of other functionalities should be inserted here. And so imagine that a large part of this effort should be placed here, imagine this is split, but a part of the effort should be on a row 14. And you can play this game more time in an iteratively way in order to show you the percentages right for your project, if, no matter if you are the customer or the provider, because in an agile way, you can be the product owner, the dev team, but you are a whole in order to decide the planning game in a sprint. And so you would recycle this game till the numbers are the right ones on row 17 in terms of percentages of the effort to buy by several phases. But you can uh, rework this matrix uh, until it's right the percentages of the effort for the ABC tasks. For instance, for many projects, the 12 to 19% of management tasks seems to be too much. And so it does mean that here I can reduce the effort, I can reduce the effort, I can reduce a bit the effort, 
still a percentages that can be more sound for somebody else in the project, the product owner, the dev team, and these 13 more hours, for instance, can be inserted here, for instance. But it's just an example. At the end of your game, you will have a percentage of effort that is the A effort, that is related to function points. Here for non-functional side, and so for an affair and project activities. Let's move from this technical view to money because it's the last more important passage. Because anybody can be a project manager looking only to an effort distribution. But typically a project manager has to move also to a second step that is about money. And so typically an analyst, a programmer <clears throat> is a, a typical competence, skill and role for the A task. And it can be this number of man days in a 100 man days project can have a certain cost, not a price, a cost. For instance, a DBA or another product specialist can have a slightly higher cost. These are just numbers as an example in Euro, or you can think they are a Brazilian real or American dollars, no matter the currency. It's just a number for explaining that there is um, a potential relationship about these elements. And here we can have a project manager, measurer like you and me, and many other management profiles costing a little bit more. So I can write the 300, 500, 400, it's not important the number here, just to depict a proportion that the A type of professionalities cost less than the B type and the B type costs slightly less than the C type. If you move again from this economic hypothesis, for a provider, this 100 man days would cost this amount of euros. And so the third passage is to move from here to the cost figures to the price. Because uh, typically in a contract, we can have a price per function point and a price per man days. Sorry, something for uh, remained here in, uh, with the Italian labels. And so imagine it's just a game 200 euros for a function points for the functional part, 150 euros for a man days. Let's suppose this number of the opposite is not important, it's just to, to play. Imagine three different potential economic schemas. There are projects paying the functional size uh, per functional sizing unit and uh, non functional activities per uh, a fee for man days. And this would be the revenue. And uh, this revenue, according to your cost, would gain to the provider this kind of margin, quite the 40. Percent. Second schema, some contracts still pay only for mandates, only mandates. This uh, template would be downloadable after the presentation on the ISPSG website if you want to play with this game. And so imagine with this effort distribution and cost distribution, a provider or an internal IT department would loss, have a loss, not a revenue. So minus. 4.20% according to these example numbers. Third hypothesis, some project could include uh, eventually in the price per function point, economically speaking, all the value for uh, counting function point as the project size, even if it was from never a uh, true assumption. And in cases like this, this could be with these numbers, of course, the revenues, the cost, and the margins for this exercise. So this is what I called the planning game. But some business question before finishing our meeting, because it's important to understand which source of information for the productivity. And that was suggestion be anybody of us here, part of ISBSG, 
or interested in ISBSG to go over the, our website and to buy for our repositories because here there are real numbers. Many contracts insert uh, ideal numbers. It's not exactly the same. Another important thing is to dis uh, distinguish, and this is another important white paper I wrote years ago, a spread for free on the, over the internet, to describe, as well as the, in my IFPAG white paper, what is the nominal productivity and why it is different from the functional productivity. That would mean with a simple click on these two white paper to understand that here this number is this number of function point divided only by the effort for the A task. If we speak about normal product nominal productivity, it does mean to calculate this number dividing function points by the 100% of the project effort, and it's a different number. Another thing, it's important to describe the VDC schema in order to better understand, no matter if you are customers or provider, about cost, revenues, and margins. Because pension points are not a project size. Another basic information is to distinguish what is productivity, nominal productivity, and what is the project delivery rate. They are one the opposite of the other concept. They are not the same number. So, a productivity in COBOL uh, is uh, in function point, if at function points, imagine about uh, zero 0.5 function points per main day, that would mean in terms of PDR to have a PDR equal to 2.0. It does mean a difference of the one fourth or four times more. So it's very important to do not make confusion about the concept because in the business, and anybody of us, whatever is your country of origins, I suppose we have that kind of issues in bits, in contracts, in contractual documents. Another very important thing to remember that the, call of the backlog should be set to zero for closing the game in order to understand your percentages for life cycle phases, but also by requirement type. And this type of information was set also, sorry, was also set in Italy in 2016 in our uh, Goof Pisma contractual guideline. And this is a, a part of this document that was cited also by other public administration documents in order to uh, give a criteria, not only for Italy, but for anybody of you willing to play the game, and I show you yet the, um, the template you can download uh, in, uh, in the next days. Everybody would want to, to game. But please, since it's an ISBSG uh, webinar, it's a fundamental for anybody of you that does not own some ISBSG repository to buy this data at least one time in order to see very, very, a very huge value for crossing it according to your filters to subdivide apple and oranges because it doesn't exist as many contractors would say uh, typical productivity because if you are producing a software with Java, Python, uh, .NET or COBOL, the productivity levels, the PDR levels cannot be the same, it's typical the uh, ancient, more ancient, is the programming language. Typically, the productivity level is lower and the PDR is higher. And so it's important to add some levels in your contract and your agreements that should be set up by looking to ISBSG reference data. And what we have yet discussed before is also part of some papers Unfortunately, uh, many of these things are written in Italian, but I am tra translating most of these papers also in English. And it's important to understand uh, these mm, very, very important messages. In particular, this, uh, this picture, because the, um, in many development projects, uh, the most of the effort is the effort costing less and uh, less of the effort is the effort costing more. 
that does mean typically that an average daily cost is dangerous. It's better to calculate a median daily cost. Whether it, no matter if you are the provider or the um, customer, because in a deal we have to exchange uh, this ideal sense and the common sense would suggest uh, to, to deal with the real number, not ideal number. And another very important message is in the last ballot. Even if we are going to apply for some good engineering techniques, like measurement techniques, benchmarking techniques, please do not forget that we are craftsmen because any project is a new project, even if it, it is going to reuse the experience from past projects. But the software you are dealing with tomorrow is not exactly the same you had yet produced yesterday. It's similar, it's not the same software. You can reuse experience, but the reuse is a, a non-functional process. It is defined into ISO 25010 standard. It is defined by CMMI and SPICE as non-functional process. So it does not have to deal with function points, but are part of, uh, of the whole project effort. And please remember that a function point is a product functional sizing unit. It's not a project sizing unit. It's only a part of the project. A very good news for anybody. In Italy, we created a new national standard just one month ago, a little bit more, and we created a new competence that we are going to put in the next two years into the ECF framework, the European Competency Framework. The competence is described in this national Italian national standard, and the title is to create a competence for the measurement specialist. And it's a very good news for anybody of your sizing, because a size, a sizing people like you and me is not necessarily a project manager. It's not necessarily only a business analyst. It's somebody different. And uh, this competence as described in this standard that we would like to move and translate in the next two years. And anybody of you in MESMA, in FISMA, in DASMA, in particular those of you part of a, a European association could join Rufpi. I'm a Rufpi is my president, so please refer to me about uh, if you are interested in that, because we are moving to the next step. That does mean to include a new competence also in the European competency framework, because it's important to have a measurement specialist, not only sizing pension points, but also dealing with service level management with the recalculation of three shows, uh, calculating and working with incidents, problems, and something like that, that is very, very important for anybody. And so just for concluding the presentation, a couple of pictures from a deal that there is one of them, my favorite strips about the requirements. If a requirements change, 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 it's important to size, 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 but with the right sizing units. Otherwise, the risk is to estimate an effort that is misleading. And another very important information also for project managers, also described in the project management body of knowledge is the scope creep. And no matter if you are a project manager, a measurer, but the scope creep is dangerous for anybody. And so hoping that I was not annoying you during this presentation, in these 40 minutes, this is, uh, I would like to, to thank you absolutely for your attention and I would like to answer to any uh, question eventually you have to, to post to, to myself. So I'm looking to, I'm looking to, uh, to your, uh, to the chat and uh, let's see, uh, Mike, unfortunately, need to, to, to go out from the session. Thanks, Marcello, for your comment, absolutely. And thanks also to, to Thomas for your suggestion. The recording, this recording is important to, to tell you for you and all the other people interested to ISBSG will be available also the video 
during the next days uh, uh, if you are going uh, directly on the ISBSG uh, website. Uh, just a moment for showing you this information. It's important before closing the meeting. So if you are going to ISBSG website and going here for attending the next webinar, uh, that is uh, from Harold Bar Banneringen on the July 17th, uh, always the same time, 1 p.m. Europe, Central European time. Uh, here you can register for Harold's webinar. But if you can go here, you can see and you can download the information right in here for receiving information. And so I can write my name, my oops, my email for receiving information also about the past webinars, videos, presentation, and plates. So it's anything is for free. So eventually, if you want to obtain that, just in a while, I will receive an email about it. And uh, thanks uh, to Luciano, thanks for your comments. Thanks to Gianfranco, thanks uh, to Peter. And uh, another question from Thomas. Uh, yes, I can use an Excel tool, a uh, planning game for each sprint because I can understand, I can intend each sprint as a mini project. So yes, if I would like to apply in an agile way, also function points, it can be more useful in an agile context because uh, uh, counting the productivity could vary in, a, in, a, in any sprint according, according to the distribution of effort between a functional and non-functional effort. Absolutely, Thomas. So it's exactly each planning game would like to be applied for each sprint. And uh, merci Lionel, Forza Italia, Forza Azzurri, speriamo. Grazie Cinzia. And uh, if there are no other questions, sorry, it's two, uh, seven past two p.m. and I used uh, some more uh, minutes than expected for for my my talk, and uh, anyway, thanks again, thanks Piero.